up guys it is friday here at porter valley ranch and as you can tell we are not at porter valley ranch this morning we are actually at ovations which is the business that rachel and i own here in sepulpa oklahoma just like farming being a small business owner means that a lot of times you have to do what you have to do when you have to do it um, your schedule takes back seat to the schedule of the business or the needs of others you always have to put the customer first well, that's not true most of the time you have to put the customer first so for me that meant waking up really early and coming up here to print these t-shirts so no i do not print t-shirts for a living but printing t-shirts is a part of what we do so ovations is our business we have a dance studio and a gymnastics gym and we print most of our own shirts because in my, what I call former life, I was a graphic designer before Rachel and I started this business. And I did print t-shirts and did websites and all that kind of stuff. So we have the equipment, we have the space. And so we print a lot of our own shirts. Hold on, let me get another shirt. We print our own stuff because it allows us to save some money. It allows us to customize things. It also gives us a little more control over what's happening. Uh, the problem right now is with the supply chain issues in America, these shirts were supposed to arrive about two weeks ago and they just came in yesterday. We have a performance tonight called Cookies with Santa. It's an annual benefit that we do for Creek County Casa. If you are not aware of the Casa program, they are advocates, uh, volunteer advocates for children who are in the uh, foster care system or kids who are going through custody battles and they're in you know, possession of the state, uh, who are in temporary housing. So CASA is a friendly face and someone who can advocate and care for the child during those hard times. So every year we do an event where we do a performance, we either do breakfast or like tonight we're doing cookies um, and then our kids perform so people bring toys and they donate money to CASA. So it's a way that we can give back to our community. So we're doing that tonight. And then we have the Sepulpa Christmas Parade tomorrow. So we sold these shirts, people ordered them so they could wear them at these events. And then they didn't come in. So we've been waiting on um, shipping and the suppliers to send us these shirts and we finally got them in. So now I am printing them early in the morning before I take the kids to school because that's the only time that I have to do it. So a lot of times you have to do what you have to do. It's just part of our life. So I thought I would let you guys into another side of our life this morning. I've got to get these done. I've got to go pick up the kids, take them to school, then feed the animals and then do a couple other things. So I'm just going to kind of take you along with us today. Um, I know that you guys are probably here because of our farm, because of our animals but we also want you to know about who we are. So this is the side of our day that you usually don't see. Got all the t-shirts printed, back home, and we gotta feed the animals because it's Friday. Uh, we don't just feed them because it's Friday, but it is Friday farm feed. And I committed to doing Friday farm feeds, and I've hit most of them, other than the ones that I was out of the country. So we're gonna feed the animals. Friday farm feed, check in with everybody, see how everyone is doing. And looks like they are pretty eager to get some feed. Come on. So while I'm down here today, I am going to walk the perimeter of the goat's pen. 
Um, it's good to do that every once in a while just to make sure there's no holes or anything. Some of the smaller ones can still get out through some of the cattle panel areas, but um, just to make sure sometimes tree limbs fall and stuff like that. So I'm gonna walk the perimeter. Um, I'll probably just put some music on and let you guys see that. But you guys always hear us talk about the valley. Uh, we don't show you the valley a lot because it's kind of hard to get down in there. Um, it's a little bit of a hike, but people pay a lot of good money uh, to go hike. So I'm gonna go for a hike, check the perimeter and see what it looks like. See these little rock ledges here. It's quite a few of those you have to jump down and over. So this area here is a big cliff. It's not fenced on the far north side yet, so we can't put any animals over on that side yet. So that's one of my winter projects I hope to get to, is to fence that off because obviously there's a lot of browse in there that they could eat. So hopefully we'll get to that um, after the first of the year. been dead for a while um, we burned this lower section of our property one time and it didn't recover and it's kind of broken and falling so that's gonna require it's gonna require some attention um, because if we don't do anything it's gonna fall on the fence so we're gonna need to get a rope and cut it that way and then cut the rest of the tree down um, so it doesn't fall on the fence or on an animal so to get back to that later this weekend but that's why we walked the perimeter so we can see what's going on see if there's any problems or potential problems and that is a potential problem you can see all these trees right here it looks like they fell down i actually came through and cut all those trees down about a month ago um, I'm going to plant this whole little creek bottom right here um, in the spring. So I cut those trees down because the problem is the canopy. There's too many trees. And when there's too many trees up here, the sunlight can't get through and then nothing grows down here. Uh, but it's actually pretty good ground. It's kind of in a river bottom and a floodplain. So it should grow pretty good. Um, it just floods for usually 24 hours and it'll go back down. It only does that about once a year or every other year. So I cut all these trees down um, and then let the goats kind of eat all the leaves and everything off of them. So again, this, this winter, I'll come through here and cut these trees up and burn them. Just make a big burn pile and possibly some firewood out of some of the bigger stuff. Um, and then this bottom area in going into the spring, we'll close it off from the animals, plant it, and then hopefully they'll have a good, um, a good stand of, of grass. We're gonna probably put some clover down here and some Lespedeza. Lespedeza grass is not a grass you usually think about planting, but for goats and for sheep, it's a natural dewormer. It helps get rid of parasites. So we'll plant that all down in here and it'll start growing in the spring. That'll be good browse and forage and grass for them to eat um, all through the summer. And if we can pull them off of it early enough, let it grow up going into the fall, then it'll still be able to eat on it going into the fall for a couple of, of weeks. And 
we've actually got a show this evening I'm gonna take you guys to kind of give you an insight into some of the cool things that our business does this time of year. Um, it's the Christmas season. So during the Christmas season, um, it's an important time to remember that it's not just about you, it's not just about me, it's not just about us and ourselves and what we need. Um, it's also about giving to others. It's about taking things that we have, the gifts, the talents, the resources, and sharing them with others. So that's something we're gonna do tonight with our students and our kids. Um, so I'll take you guys there in just a minute. But before I go there, we've had a problem. Um, some of our chickens should be laying eggs and they're not. Um, one of the reasons I think they're not laying eggs is because of the temperature change. Also because we haven't done a great job of providing an environment for them to thrive in. Um, it's, they were in the pullet chain. You guys saw back at the, uh, the fair, we took them to the chicken show. So those chickens are old enough now that they should start laying eggs. And in order for them to start laying eggs, we're gonna give them a little bit of a boost with their nutrition. We're also gonna give them a little bit of a boost in their environment. So I've got two things. So one way that we're going to boost their nutrition, you guys have probably seen this Grub Terra Black Soldier Fly Larva. Grub Terra is a company that has done a really good job of reaching out to YouTube channels and people on social media who have farms, um, kind of a grassroots marketing campaign. So one, I really admire and appreciate that. Um, one of my favorite books is a book called Guerrilla Marketing. It's an older book, but it talks about marketing and advertising uh, from a grassroots level. That's something that I used to do in my former life whenever I was a designer and in advertising. Um, um, I dropped this in the dirt just a second ago, so the bag got a little bit dirty. But they sent us this bag and asked us to you know, feed it to our chickens um, and see what happens. So this is one of the ways that I'm going to boost their nutrition is by feeding them this black fly larva. Um, it says that for one pound of grubs, you save 20 pounds of food waste from landfills. So that's important, saving the environment, doing good things for the environment, and we're gonna give it to our chickens and we're gonna see if that helps them out. The other thing is, we are going to take one of the things that is wasted on our farm, which is wool. We raise sheep, you guys have seen our sheep, and we uh, had big plans about taking that wool and preparing it and selling it for people to use uh, in spinning, looming, um, whatever they do, knitting, whatever you do with wool, because we don't use the wool. So we had our sheep sheared uh, back in the summer. We put it in bags and then we didn't do anything with it. So I'm gonna take one of these bags right here. Right here, we have a bag of wool. Uh, this is actually off of Paul, um, our breeding ram. You can tell because of the color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bag down to the chicken coop and I'm gonna put it in their nesting boxes. Uh, the sun's going down, so I'm gonna try to do it really quickly before the sun goes down. But then I'm also gonna feed them these Grub Terra um, larva worms, which is um, you know just a supplement. It's not what you feed them by themselves. We obviously feed our chickens, but we're gonna give them a supplement every day for a week and just kind of see if that boosts them and encourages them to lay. So let's go check that out. Okay, so here are the nesting boxes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take kind of a handful of wool. I'm gonna put it in each one so that it gives them a safe and uh, comfortable place to hopefully start laying some eggs. It's kind of like a bird's nest. If you think about bird's nests, they always have like, you know, some grass, some leaves, some hay. Then they also have some stuff in there that, you know, makes it comfortable. And so if these guys aren't comfortable, then they're not gonna lay anything. So there's that. So there's wool in each one of these holes. And then we're also gonna take some, uh, some fake eggs, like some golf balls and put in there. And I don't know why, but I guess it's like peer pressure. It encourages them to lay. Obviously, I've still got tons of wool. Hopefully we can figure out a way to use that in the near future also, because right now it's just going to waste. So we're gonna try that. You can tell um, these chickens also have some, some pumpkins in here and some different things. We're just trying to kind of boost them. But I'm gonna put some of this um, grub tear out and see if they eat it and see if that kind of encourages them to be a little more healthy and lay some eggs. That's what those things look like. Basically dried, um, dried maggots is really what they are. Let's see if this says, so the 16 ounce bag feeds up to five chickens for a month. So obviously they don't need a whole lot of this stuff. So I'm just gonna put that out there. I'm gonna seal the bag. It's kind of like a Ziploc top in here. So I'm gonna put that in with the feed. And every day when the boys come out to feed the chickens, they can give them a little bit of it. 
and we'll see what that does. So I'll tell you guys next week on next week's Farm Friday because I am going to get back to doing Farm Fridays every Friday. Uh, I've missed you guys. haven't been able to be consistent with that since we went to Africa, but we're back. We have no more excuses. So you guys hold me accountable. If you see a Friday come and go and I didn't post something, you better start screaming at me and let me know that that's my job and you expect to see us and we expect to see you there. So we're going to put those out. Um, that's all we got for today. And we are definitely, um, on a tight schedule today we've got to go to the what we call cookies with santa show so i'm gonna take you guys along with us there and then i'll see you guys when that show's over cheese cheese read read better than i thought right <laughs> but we have made sure that they understand that today it's not about them, it's about others. So you guys brought toys in the lobby and those will keep streaming in and we will be able to give those to those and they go to the kids in need and that is an amazing thing. So thank you guys so much for doing that. I'm going to start the show in just a minute. Make sure and clap, make sure and cheer, make sure and stay the whole time. Um, it's not gonna be that long, so clap for everybody. Thank you guys. sit by my friend Rumble here. So I know today's video is a little bit different. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed kind of seeing behind the scenes of our life. Uh, we are not full-time YouTubers, obviously. We are not full-time farmers. Um, we have businesses, we have a life, we have a lot going on in our community. Um, some people always tell us that we're too busy um, and that's probably true. But to be honest, we don't really know 
any other way. Um, we feel like we've got a lot to give. We feel like we've got a lot to say and we have a lot of responsibilities. Some just because of who we are. Um, obviously our, our animals are our responsibility, our kids are our responsibility, and those are our choice. But there are also things uh, that come along with owning a business that we feel like we have a responsibility to our clients and to our community to give back. So um, Creek County Casa is the organization that we partnered with for our Cookies with Santa, the event that you guys just saw. And it's something that is really near and dear to our heart. Um, CASA is a nationwide organization um, who they're advocates for kids who are going through a hard time. If they're in custody battles, if they're in between homes, you know, be, be it in the foster care system or something like that. And um, for each kid, they have an advocate through CASA and those kids or those people, those volunteers are able to come alongside them and provide some consistency in their life through a really hard time in their personal journey. So we really love what they do. Um, I encourage you, if you don't have a place to give through your church or somewhere locally, you know, seek out an organization like CASA and see if you can help out. Um, we ask people to bring toys off of our angel tree or just to bring an unwrapped toy to our Cookies with Santa event and show um, as their ticket. So they have to bring that to get into the show and those toys goes to kids who some of them wouldn't have a Christmas, some of them wouldn't have as good of a Christmas if people weren't so generous. So I encourage you to find a place that you can give. It doesn't have to be much, you know, 10, $20 gift can really change the trajectory of a kid's Christmas. Um, it can put a smile on their face. It can put some joy in their heart. So be sure that during the Christmas season, um, we don't just make it all about us. Make sure that we are helping others and that we are sharing a little bit of our joy with others and making their life better. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next week on Farm Friday here at Porter Valley Ranch.